What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to a Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review of episode number 73. To recap the last episode, we saw Malo's brother return home just in time for the Alola Bread Festival, where he had hopes of selling his bread to Noah, who is the trainer that we know with the Alolan Raichu. After successfully having to change their plans at the last second, Malo's family wins the festival, only to find out that Noah is already getting married. Check out that review if you already haven't seen it. Today's episode that we're going over was a fantastic episode. As I said in the last episode, I truly believe <clears throat> that the fillers are gonna take a back seat for a little bit. And starting with this episode, the next few episodes, I think are gonna be pretty story driven. And this one certainly turned out to be if you did enjoy this episode, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what your favorite part was and let me know if you have any different thoughts than I do or if I missed anything. Now, as this episode starts off, it starts off at Team Rocket's base. This is a Team Rocket based episode. We only saw Ash for about the last 10 seconds of the episode. I really thought they were about to do a Pokemon episode without Ash. But after this episode, I think that's like against not like policy or anything, but I think they legitimately try to have Ash in every single episode, and this episode specifically proved it. Uh, but anyway, they were at the base and they were folding up like envelopes or something, or, or maybe it was like bags for their donuts to go in that they're selling. Uh, but they were talking about how they haven't caught any Pokemon recently. And Jesse decides, okay, well, we're gonna figure out a plan, but first let's get some snacks goes up to the fridge and there's only a single cream puff left there and you know Jesse so Jesse's like nah this is mine and Marini jumps out of nowhere and attacks Jesse and they're like what is that and Meowth was like Marini just used knockoff which is a dark type move and if you recall Team Rocket has a dark EMZ so they got pretty excited oh and by the way Mimikyu wound up eating that cream, cream puff don't forget about Mimikyu we're going to be talking, I'm going to be saying that name so much over the next couple weeks. Slight spoiler. Uh, but anyway, they were celebrating the possibility of that about potentially being able to use that Z move. All they need now is a Z ring. Conveniently, a call comes in from HQ and they're evaluating. And, you know, the, the little person, uh, Giovanni's assistant is evaluating and is like, you know, your progress has stalled. Like, you're not doing anything. What are you doing? And Jesse's like, you know what, I've, I've had just about enough of this. We're working on Z moves. We're working on being able to use a Z move. We have our Z crystal, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, they're like, well, you're going to have to talk to an island kahuna. Do you have any leads on that? I'm like, well, crap. No, we don't. And Giovanni speaks for one of the first, first time in a while. And he's like, hey, go to Ula Ula Island. I've known the island kahuna for a long time. I don't remember that being canon. I don't, I mean, I don't know if what happened at the end of Ultra Sun and Moon is canon in the episode RR. If you haven't checked that out, we have an amazing, amazingly long LP of um, Ultra Sun and Moon on the channel. But anyway, um, I don't remember any of this Giovanni Nanu business. Uh, but anyway, Team Rocket heads off to Ula Ula, and that's where the intro runs. Today's episode is titled The Rocket Gang's Island Pilgrimage. Get a Z-Ring. Whoa! Super Team Rocket focused. Like, I mean, it was so Team Rocket focused that it was enjoyable to watch. Now, as the episode starts, we see Team Rocket flying into Ula Ula on their famous Meowth blimp and they're talking about how they still want to get this special rage from Giovanni and how Meowth just wants to sit on Giovanni's lap and I'm like I've talked about this so often why are they still stuck on this it's been 21 years or is it it's, it's been a long time I don't understand why they're still going on about it but hey they talk about how they've made they've taken anti beware steps so you know once when they get far away from base like beware comes and picks them up I still can't figure out what's going on with Beware. I don't get it. But that's not the focus. They had these little robots that were sitting upstairs in their base, and they had a looping soundtrack. So Beware would think that they were still there and wouldn't go looking for them. It flashes over to a home, and inside, 
Um, there are two siblings talking to their older sister, Acerola. We've never met Acerola before. This is her introduction. And she has a shiny Mimikyu that is floating next to her. Now this Mimikyu is going to get a lot creepier as this episode goes. Just trust me on that. But she has this Mimikyu, a shiny Mimikyu that is floating next to her. And they want her, to, the, the siblings want Acerola to read them a story. I guess they always read a story. And Acerola seems much less creepy in the anime than she does in the games. So she sits down and starts reading this story. And, and the story is about, hold on, it's about the, what's the name of it? The greedy, the greedy something something. It's about a, a greedy ghost, uh, a ghost that takes a, uh, takes a whole bunch of things. Forgive me for not knowing the name. Now we see Team Rocket walking on the island and they're heading to find the island Kahuna. They don't know who it is. My guess is that it's Nanu. Spoil spoilers, it's Nanu. Um, but they're carrying a secret weapon. And when they said that, I was like, you really brought a weapon when Giovanni literally told you to go talk to this guy? Well, it turns out it's just a bag of their latest thing that they're selling at their donut stand, Mixed Fruits Malasada. So their plan is to become friendly with the Isla Kahuna and hopefully get a Z-Ring from it. They come across a police office, which if you've played the games, you already know what this police office is, but they put on a disguise and they go up to the door where nobody answers. As they open the door, they see a whole bunch of Alolan Meowth. Which you know Meowth versus Alolan Meowth, something's gonna go wrong. But Meowth starts holding his bag of Malasadas close to him, and the Alolan Meowth attack him, and they all start eating it. And then Nanu comes out of the back. And Nanu's like, what is all this noise? You know, in his Nanu voice. What was his Nanu voice? Oh, what's all this noise? What's all this noise going on? Um, so Nanu is like, you know, they're, they're talking, they're like, yeah, we're trying to find the island Kahuna, and Nanu's like, oh, well, you won't be able to find him, he's gone to do martial arts training. He'll be back in 10 days, or a month, or maybe a year. And upon hearing that, Team Rocket's hopes and dreams get shattered, and they run away. And Nanu's staying there, and he's like, I really don't want to get involved with, the, with this group, they seem like a bunch of hooligans, and I don't want to be involved with them. Back at Acerola, she's finishing up her story, and like I said, her story was about um, the Greedy Lapu, uh, L-A-P-O-O -O was, was the name of it, um, and it also talked about the island Kahuna. It goes over, flashes over to where Team Rocket is sitting, they're still on the island and they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do. They really don't want to leave empty handed because they were literally told by Giovanni that he was expecting big things from them and to go to this island Kahuna. So they're sitting there and Jessie gets all heated up and she kicks a rock and this rock breaks and a big Gengar pops out of it and scares the entire group and they wind up dropping their Z crystal. The Gengar reaches over and picks up the crystal and actually sees Acerola and her siblings in the distance because they went to go look to see if this greedy Lapu was actually a real thing. So they're over there, and they get scared and start running away, and the Gengar runs in front of them and scares the siblings, and Acerola steps in front and is like, hey, you're scaring them, stop it. So Gengar picks up Acerola and takes off, and her shiny Mimikyu follows behind. Yes, flies and follows behind. Do you get it yet? Do you get it yet? I'll explain it in a little bit. After this commercial break, the Gengar, who Acerola is still on the back, is going around stealing things. He's stealing Drampa's food, he steals a gold orb from a guy, he steals a Blissey's egg, just stealing absolutely everything. And this is where Acerola refers to this Gengar as the Greedy Lapu, which is what her, as we said earlier, what her story was about. So this is the Gengar. When Jessie kicked that rock open, she actually let this but what apparently was supposed to just be a story, she turned it into a real thing. Uh, as they, 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 they start flying and they're above the clouds and it winds up going Gengar versus Mimikyu. And there, or I guess I should say Mimikyu versus Gengar to go with the picture that's showing right now. Um, but they're squaring off with each other and they're about to start, they're about to start fighting. It flashes down to Team Rocket, who's lost track of the Gengar, um, but they realize as the clouds clear out above them, oh, Gengar and Mimikyu are just right above them, fighting. About to start fighting. Mimikyu can't hit Gengar. Now hold on, now hold on. 
there's a little bit of um, discontinuity um, right here because Mimikyu could not hit Gengar. Every time it would go for a Shadow Claw, it would just go straight through Gengar. Are you getting it yet? But Gengar grabs Mimikyu and throws Mimikyu up. How? How? Acerola does a very Ash thing and jumps out and catches Mimikyu again, how, I don't understand, and goes falling. Gengar tries to catch them but fails, so Acerola and Mimikyu fall through the trees and, and hit the ground. But they're okay, they stand up and they see that Gengar is off to the side and Gengar looks very concerned for them. And Acerola goes to the Gengar and is like, you know, I'm okay, and starts jumping around to which Gengar gets excited. And the Gengar wants Acerola to stay with him. So he starts offering everything. Offers her a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of berries, offers the gold ore. And she's like, no, I'm sorry, I can't stay. I, I gotta go home. Um, because I, you know, I have I have the library to take care of. I have these siblings to take care of. And he's like, okay, so he starts taking out more valuable things and holds up the dark Z crystal. And she's like, no, I can't go with you. Which upsets Gengar very much. He starts going around, he's hitting all these trees, and he's he's throwing a nice little temper tantrum. And after realizing that Acerola was not gonna go with him, he picks up Acerola and starts to put him inside. Gengar was storing all of this stuff inside of him. When he would pick up something, he would put it inside of his stomach, and you know, because he's a ghost, that makes sense, so he can store everything there, right? So he tries to fit Acerola inside, and then gets hit in the back with a shadow ball. Well, it's Team Rocket, right? Team Rocket's been there the entire time just watching, and Team Rocket's Mimikyu launches that, uh, launches that Shadow Ball and frees up Acerola and creates a distraction long enough for James to get the Z-Crystal back. And then they start, you know, the team, team Rocket runs up and they're making fun of Gengar because they, he looked dumb in front of Acerola because he got attacked. And then they start running away, and Gengar chases after them. Now, Acerola's siblings, um, after Acerola got taken away, went to find Nanu, and they bring Nanu back, and Acerola calls Nanu uncle. Now, I briefly, kind of vaguely remember that being a thing. Uh, I just don't know if that's just like a, a thing that you say, you know, like, first is my brother, even though they're not related to, you know, you know what I mean? I don't know if Acerola and Nanu are exactly related like that. So as he's pursuing Team Rocket, Gengar winds up taking over Meowth's body after Meowth starts to attack him and starts to attack Team Rocket. And Jesse's like, nope, Mimikyu, knock that boy out. And straight up knocks Meowth out and Gengar escapes. Gengar then takes over Jesse's body, which that's just wild. And Jesse starts walking like a zombie and James is like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Sends out Marini and decides they're going to use knockoff to try and get the Gengar out, which surprisingly works effectively. Now, James told Marini to use a soft knockoff. I don't think Marini got that because Marini smacked the heck out of Jesse's head, but it actually did hurt the Gengar. Gengar gets really mad. I mean... Gengar gets really mad and starts to attack and Team Rocket's like, what do we do? What do we do? Nanu and Acerola come up and, and Nanu's like, hey, if you're going to finish this thing, finish it the right way and picks up a Z-Ring and tosses it over to James. And James grabs the Z-Ring in a very epic looking way and puts it on, puts on the dark Z-Crystal and they go for a freaking dark hole eclipse. And this looked so cool. The animators are so good at Z-moves because it was Jesse, James, and Meowth, all of them doing the animation for the uh, for the dark Z-move. And Marini jumped up, had it mastered on try one, absolutely knocking the crap out of Gengar. It was really, really cool. Afterwards, they're all sitting there and Acerola just wonders if this Gengar just wants someone to be friends with. Not if he, not, he's not trying to steal stuff. He's not trying to kidnap people. He just wants someone to play with. And he's like, and she says, well, I can't go with you, but I, we can play whenever you want to, which really makes Gengar extremely happy. Nanu comes up and he says, Gengar, if you do anything else bad, I'm going to steal you away for good this time. 
And Ace Roll is like, yep, don't mess with him. He's the island kahuna, which is when it's revealed to everyone. And Team Rocket's like, hey, 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 we were supposed to come see you. We were sent specifically from Giovanni to find you. Can we have the Z-Ring? And Nanu's like, sure. Since you took care of Ace Arola, here is your Z-Ring. Gives him the Z-Ring. And Jesse makes an inquiry and Jesse's like, isn't that Mimikyu flying? And Ace Arola's like, yep, Mimikyu's a ghost. And you see Mimikyu flying back and forth in Jesse, like, through Jesse, back to Jesse, through Jesse, back to Jesse. And Jesse's like, oh, okay. Wait, what does that mean? And realizes that this Mimikyu is actually a ghost. I think we're gonna find out more about that. But the Mimikyu winds up giving Jesse the Mimikyu Z, the Mimikyu Z crystal, like the, the Mimikyu specific Z crystal. So in this episode, Team Rocket got a Z ring they mastered, apparently, the Dark Z move, and they got a Mimic UEM Z. This is setting up to be amazing. And then, like I said, the last 10 or 15 seconds shows a boat on its way to Ula Ula Island. Who else but Ash coming for his third grand trial? Like I said at the beginning of the episode, I think this episode and a couple more episodes to come is going to be a whole lot of story based. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to see a lot of character growth, less for less fillers just for a little while. But that was the episode. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, let me know what your favorite part was in the comments down below and let me know if I missed anything. Um, as I said in yesterday's uh, anime review. We're going to be getting all these anime reviews up this week so that we're back on track. Give me some feedback on what you think about how we're editing the videos and what you think would be cool to see. But that's it for this one. We will see you in the next anime review. Until then, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.